Hello everyone, good day to all of you. I wanted to do an installation video and a little bit of a review of the NA5 Nefarious Arms adjustable gas block. And the reason that I say a little bit of a review, uh, and if you're, feeling, if you're feeling like this is maybe some deja vu, if you've been following this channel, I did already review the NA5 gas block. Um, Nefarious Arms, a little bit ago, sent me a 11 inch 416A5 claw number, which is really cool. And they had one of their gas blocks installed on there, but I liked it so much that I did actually go out and buy my own, which I have right here. And uh, I'm gonna be installing it today on this MR556, a one that I have here, just talking about a little bit of how it installs and also the, kind of seeing if it will behave any differently than the one that I had sent to me. So if you are interested in a really much more in-depth review on this gas block, then I would recommend checking out that review video, which I will have linked below in the description. Uh, I will still be kind of testing a few of the things that I wasn't able to test in the original review in here. Uh, and of course, just function checking, function testing to make sure that everything does work correctly. But uh, this will be much more of a focus on the installation and kind of how it differs because this is the A1A3 retrofit version, whereas the original one that uh, Nefarious Arms had sent me, as I said, was on a 416A5 clone upper. So I'm gonna kind of see how things differ between this and your original kind of vented uh, A1, A3 gas block, which is what you're usually going to find on uh, virtually every 416 and MR, the MR556, uh, and most of the 416s in the US are gonna follow the older pattern, which this one is compatible with. So I'm gonna get started with removing the current one, as I said, just the factory HK vented one. So very first, of course, you'll have to remove your hand guard, remove your muzzle device. I did all that already just to not waste anybody's time. And I'm also gonna be kind of doing a bit of a review on Nefarious Arms' tools that they did send me. These are, I've already been using these actually a little bit on some of my other projects. And I gotta say, these are pretty incredibly well-made tools. So they have, uh, they sent me a reaction rod, which I'll be talking about and using a little bit later. Uh, and most importantly, this will help a lot when I actually go to in install and more so remove this old gas block here. Uh, they make a block here that you can see perfectly will hold this vented gas block, just makes it way easier. Um, would recommend this if you can find them and if you can afford to, uh, you know, they're not terribly expensive. Uh, they're definitely worth it so you don't mar up anything. And uh, as I said, it holds everything just remarkably well. As a little bit of a uh, tip, because I have already removed this before when I did a uh, Waffenberg, installation, which I, of course, removed again and then put this one back on just because I didn't really have the best of luck with it. Um, one thing you may run into on these HKs is their coiled roll pins down here tend to have kind of an issue with uh, kind of corroding and rusting in place. And uh, even if they don't corrode, I noticed the very first time you take them out, mine weren't very corroded at all, but they are still extremely, extremely tight. So if you run into any issues removing them, uh, just soak it overnight with coil. And for the roll pin punch, uh, the 532nd, I'm just using a Tecton 532nd roll pin punch here. Very good size for it, and that'll work well. So I'm gonna switch camera angles to somewhere where I can kind of pound on better and uh, show you removing this first. Okay, so I've got this all on my anvil here. So just taking, you can see the vented gas block just lines up perfectly here with these two pins that they have. Just popping that in there. And that was really simple. Uh, like I said, the very first time that you'll do this, it will be significantly tighter. But since I did this before, it just came right out. The gas block itself will also be a pretty tight fit. Uh, I have one of Nefarious Arms' uh, 16.5 chrome line barrels on here, which this is a little bit looser on, you can see. So that just slides off. If it is tight, just use a rubber mallet and just kind of tap this on the top here and it'll come off just kind of wiggle it around as you go and it'll it'll be easy so got that off nice and simple this did make it way easier one thing I also do really really do like is that they have little holes here you can see for the roll pins to just sit in so they can't fall and get lost on the floor or something really really well thought out tool here so I'm going to take this back in before you actually install the new gas block, it can be a very good idea to actually clean off the surface, especially where the gas block is going to sit. On this one, it's not really too necessary. You can see this is pretty clean overall because uh, this is a pretty new barrel. I don't, you know, I haven't really had a chance to really shoot it like crazy yet. But uh, as you shoot it, of course, it will get kind of a little bit dirty under there. So it can be a good idea to just kind of clean off the extra 
uh, fouling if necessary. Um, I'm probably just going to wipe mine down. I don't really think I even need to use any solvent. And then after that, just putting on some oil, especially on the actual HK barrels because they are a super tight fit. It'll just help to guide the whole gas block onto here and not mar up uh, or have any dings on your barrel. And then also looking at the actual gas block itself, this is something I wasn't able to show too much in, uh, or actually at all with these instructions. So um, when you buy one of their gas blocks, they do send you instructions. This is something that they didn't send me in the original review. So it is cool to see what they actually will send. Uh, I bought this one through house manufacturing, which is another interesting point to note that this NA5 gas block, when you buy it, or rather I should say, if you buy it directly through Nefarious Arms themselves, the adjustment, the N and S and the line next to it will not be color filled. However, if you buy this through house manufacturing, you can see that they do color fill it. Uh, I read on their site that this is supposed to be, uh, I believe they said it was oil based paint, which is different from the one that was sent to me on the uh, original upper for review, uh, which is an interesting distinction to point out because um, all the paint on that one did melt off. I will see if, if it's gonna melt off on this one. It, it may not, cause there's just gonna be less kind of intense blast going on there. Cause it's not right behind the muzzle, right? Because it's a 16.5 rather than a 11 inch barrel. And uh, it is a different type of paint. So we'll see if it fares any better. If not, then, you know, it, it's fine. Uh, the, in, with my setup, it's gonna be under the handguard. So I don't care too much, but it would be nice uh, to have that stay on there. But I am gonna go ahead and just kind of get this barrel uh, just spotless. I do see there's just a little bit more carbon here. So I'm gonna clean it up and I'll show the actual installation process from there. So I'm gonna be using Nefarious Arms' uh, reaction rod here for this part because I, I have two reaction rods here. Normally I use the Midwest Industries URR, which works excellent and I, it, it's good. It has this uh, full support up here. I usually will use this if I'm actually doing like barrel work or torquing a lot on it. But uh, if I'm hammering on a gas block uh, and you know I might end up using this more in the future too because it has a lot of good features but uh, if you look right here one thing I do particularly like about the nefarious arms reaction rod here when I'm actually installing the gas block if I pop this into here it goes in just like normal so you can see this threaded hole right here lines up with the bottom of the receiver uh, you can take this little what looks like a handle here and just screw this in here I'm going to close that dust cover so it's out of the way. So now that I got this secured, this actually pushes up into the upper receiver itself, you can see, and it just holds the whole thing so it doesn't slide out on its own. While I really like that Midwest uh, URR, I have noticed that if I am trying to hammer on stuff a lot, that uh, at least in the vise I got, this one always wants to kind of slide or, you know, up and down a little bit, which is annoying. I mean, I don't have the best vise in the world either, but uh, this is... A this one definitely works a lot better. So putting this back in the vise now, I'm gonna go ahead and oil the entire barrel here. Just a very light coat. Uh, again, as I said, just to prevent any scratches, if there are any, if it's a particularly tight fit. Um, may as well just preemptively put a bit of oil on here. Of course, just like with any other HK gas block, this little notch at the back here is gonna just line up 12 o'clock with that little notch in the barrel. Uh, this does look like it's a little bit more of a bulky notch, which is cool, interesting. It'll sit a little bit higher up in the barrel. So it's nice and oiled now. So just sliding this on. Let's see if we'll need to use a mallet or anything. About the same uh, as far as tightness goes compared to the original gas block on this barrel. Now this is a good point for me to show uh, that even though this is one of the A1, A3 compatible gas blocks here, you only have the rear pin that goes through. And they do send an extra uh, coiled pin as well, you can see in this bag of the extra adjustment screws and all of that, uh, and the anti-seize, and then there's the coiled pin right there, which I'm going to install with. I'm gonna use theirs. Have a bit of excess oil still on my hands, which I'm just gonna kind of rub on this pin here. Uh, just kind of, uh, it will help it to just kind of guide it into the hole for it. I'll apply a little bit extra as well. It's not necessary, but it will make things easier. Now I'm probably not gonna use this uh, installation block here uh, to put in this new 
uh, the new gas block because um, this doesn't fit perfectly on there. It will still fit, but I think it may actually end up being easier here if I just do it on the reactor run and all of that. And I just am kind of pushing this in by hand just a little bit so it doesn't slip out on me when I go to hammer it in, which I'm going to do right now. This is a pretty tight roll pin, so I do think I'm actually going to switch to using their block. So you can see how this lines up if you try to use the NA5 gas block on their installation tool here. It's kind of being pushed up, of course, where on the regular vented gas block, this would go through that pin. That's kind of getting in the way there, which is expected, of course, but that's fine. I'm going to take this to the anvil. Um, for the sake of brevity, I'm not going to bother recording this part. It's literally going to be the exact same process that you already saw, just in reverse. Just going to pound this coiled roll pin here right in, and I will be right back in a moment. All right, so that is installed. I've got this about an equal distance on each side, so it just looks nice, and it's really, really tight. It was definitely way tighter than the original one, uh, but still no issues during installation. So no point in having all this excess oil here now. Next step is uh, this is fully done. I'm going to go ahead and put the muzzle device back on here and then put my hand, hand guard back on and then I'll run some tests on it. And so the one other thing that I do want to test in this video is I want to see if when this is set to the suppressed setting here, I want to see if the vented off gas, which you can see right there, uh, if that's going to go into my hand. Because that was something I was thinking might potentially be an issue when I was testing it out on the 11 inch version. Um, but I don't think it will, but we're actually going to find out conclusively here. I also want to say that just when I was doing that little demonstration here, I am noticing that uh, this, is, uh, this is still very easy to move, but this is a little bit stiffer than the one that they had sent me. So this probably needs to be just, you know, kind of worn in just ever so slightly. Negligible difference, but worth noting nonetheless. And I will mess with the adjustment screws as well. Just get it to whichever one is most pleasant to shoot and cycles the most reliably. See if it any, behaves any differently than it did with the 11 inch barrel, which I'm not going to record because I did that in the original review and it actually gets really lengthy to test all those. This would be way too long of a video to show that here again, but I'll let you know how it goes. So I'm going to play some footage here. I just went through and ended up testing every single adjustment screw on here, which I was hoping not to do. I was just going to kind of open it up as much as possible and forget it, but I was having a lot of cycling issues suppressed with uh, most of the screws. I am on the black uh, non-vented screw right now and uh, going to do one final test with it to make sure that it does lock back and everything when suppressed. I was able to shoot this. It was cycling with the, uh, I believe, the 0.7 millimeter. I'll put up the exact size here on the screen, um, but the smallest vent was cycling, but it wasn't locking back on an empty magazine. So I'm just going to make sure that the uh, not vented one does, which it probably will. Uh, actually, Nefarious Arms themselves, um, when I bought this on the site, it does say that on this barrel length, on the 14.5 to 16.5 barrel length, you'll you'll probably need to use the black non vented screw. I was just kind of hoping that I wouldn't have to, because it does recoil a fair bit more than any of the other screws. But with that being said, let me go ahead and let's test how this works. I'm using uh, Lake City M193 here. I'm just going to fire three rounds, that's how much I've got loaded, and then simultaneously I have the handguard on here. I just want to test if I get any gas, uh, you know, any burning to my hand when I'm holding this. I was testing this earlier with the handguard on with the different adjustment screws and I didn't feel any, but those weren't cycling, so don't know if, if it would uh, be any different, but I have high hopes for this. So let's see. Okay, good. So that actually did lock back. So. Um, let me test a little bit, just to do a little bit quicker fire here, just to see how it feels on my hand. That first three, I felt maybe like a little bit of a lukewarm, uh, tiny bit on my hand. And I'm just holding this totally normally, I'm not going way high or anything like that. This is how I normally do grip the rifle. That is really, really pleasant. So I mean, yeah, I can feel a little bit, uh, you can see there is a tiny, tiny bit of gas, but if you compare that to how it was when I was shooting the Waffenberg, uh, way better. And I can actually hold my hand up there and not have to pull it back or you know, feel any discomfort from the heat. It's just a little, little bit on my hand. And other than that, it's fine. So, this is working phenomenally well. Um, only thing I can say is I was just hoping not to have to use that screw, but otherwise, perfect. Uh, one little side note that I am noticing though, um, 
your mileage will probably vary depending on the handguard, but at least with this Geissele handguard, it's actually a really, really tight fit, and it almost looks like it's kind of scoring the sides of the, uh, the gas block when I take this off and on, which I have been doing a lot of today with the adjustment screws and all that. So um, it, it's still doable. You can still take it on and off, but uh, yeah, it's just tighter and kind of a little bit more annoying with that, but uh, it works great, so I'm fine with it. Just such a pleasant shooting experience. I wanted to take the handguard off and to show the gas block a bit closer now after I've shot it. And I did shoot it quite a bit more after recording that previous segment there. I shot uh, several more mags and no issues with overgassing, even despite the fact that I'm using the unvented screw. It's been perfect. Uh, good ejection pattern going to about 4 o'clock. And I did also want to kind of circle back and address some of my potential concerns uh, with this gas block that I kind of raised when I was installing it. The first of which is the adjustment tightness it is perfectly fine it as i said it did start a little bit on the tight side even then not that bad but no issues with that now it's really comfortable and really easy to turn i did also want to talk about the uh, tightness that i was mentioning regarding the handguard removal so if you look at the gas block a little bit and it's a little bit hard to see because there's some carbon kind of on here. Now I don't think that the handguard itself is actually touching the gas block anywhere. I think more so it just kind of gets a little bit caught just how I have things set up on my handguard when I'm trying to remove it. So if you look there at kind of the top area of the gas block there's a little superficial scratch in the finish which is super minor but I do think that that's where it's kind of scratching when I try to remove the handguard uh, and that's probably why it's feeling so tight just from whatever is hitting right there. But ultimately, my biggest concern about the gas block potentially shooting hot gas into my hand when I'm suppressed has not been an issue whatsoever. As I did mention in the footage, it is, I'm feeling a tiny bit of gas coming off into my hand, but I, I can't stress enough, especially comparing it to the other gas blocks that I've tried that have had this issue, comparing it to this Nefarious Arms gas block, it's just mildly warm, and that's all that I feel on my hand. After I got everything adjusted, all said and done, this has been working perfectly reliably, and it has been really, really good. I don't want to ramble on too much with this. Just as a reminder, I already did mention, though, at the start of the video, that I do have another video already on this, the original review on an 11-inch 416A5 clone upper, if you want to check that one out for a much more in-depth breakdown on the gas block itself, not focusing whatsoever on an installation, just on performance of it on that upper, then do check out that original review, which is linked below in the description. And I'll keep shooting it, of course, but so far, this has been a phenomenal, phenomenal gas block. So thank you all for watching, and let me know if you have any other questions on this, or if there's anything else you want me to test on this, or on anything else. Feel free to leave that in the comments below. I always do read them. Take care, and I'll see you all in the next one.